let's go. Alright, bismillah. Alright, so now we're going to get into the next property. We covered qism, which is definiteness. Now we're going to speak about i'rab. I'rab. And i'rab means the purpose of... Essentially, i'rab, it's the status of a word. And the status of the word allows us to determine the purpose of that word within the sentence. Right? By looking at that ending, it's telling something about its role in, this, in the sentence, its significance. And this is usually determined by looking at the end of the word, but sometimes that can be a little bit misleading. As we'll learn later on, there's words that are just kind of set in their way, or there's words that can't take on a certain um, harakat or a certain ending. And we'll learn about those as time goes on. So the three states of a noun, the first is rafa. Right? Well, the three states are rafa, nasb, and jar. So let's delve into rafa. Rafa usually is represented by a single or double dhamma on the end of a word. And what this represents is the doer, fa'il, of a verbal sentence. Remember we said in a verbal sentence there are three parts usually. There's the fa'il, which is the verb that usually comes in the beginning of a verbal sentence. And then there's the doer, which is the fa'il, which usually has a dhamma on the end, which we're learning right now. And then there is the object or the thing receiving the action, which usually has a fata, or that has a fata generally. So in this verbal construction, we can figure out who the doer is because it has rafa on the end. So this means he hit, this means uzair, and this means uh, faraz. So this would be translated as uzair hit faraz. We know who the doer is because of this dhamma on the end. All right, next up is the subject or predicate of a nominal sentence. So here we have al-baytu qadimun. This would be our subject, which means the house. And then this would be the predicate, which is um, old. So this would be translated as the house is old. And once again, there is no word for is in Arabic. You just kind of have to know the construction that you're dealing with then fill in those filler words to kind of connect things together. So not in every case will the subject and the predicate be rafa, but a lot of the times they are. It's one thing to keep in mind. Next up is nasb. And usually that's represented by a fatha, single fatha, and then a double fatha. And we studied that after a double fatha, an alif is written. And that's a tajweed rule, right? So it'd be a double fatha with an alif on the end of a word. And this represents an object or receiving action. Sorry, an object receiving an action in a verbal sentence. So in this case, faraz, right? We said this sentence means uzer, hit, faraz. In this case, the action that faraz is receiving is being hit, right? He's the one being hit. He's that. He's the object receiving the action, right? So that's fairly simple. There's another case in which we will see fatha on words, and that's usually where there's a harf that comes in. You know, that small particle that has an impact on a noun, it comes in and it forces a noun that can either come right after it or have multiple words in between it to take that fatha, to take that sign of nasb. All right, the third state, and the one that we're going to probably spend the most time on, is known as jar. And this is usually represented by two kasuras on the bottom, as we know, tanween or one kasra on the end of a word. And there are two scenarios where this applies. The first, as we learned before, is mudaf, mudaf ilay. So first we have the mudaf, which is a word that's being associated. And then we have mudaf ilay, the word that's being associated to. And this is known as an association phrase. And as we studied before in Arabic, um, or just in grammar in general, or language in general is that an incomplete sentence is known as a phrase. In Arabic there are five main phrases and we're going to study them all in detail but first we're just going to delve into mudaf here because we need to know about how it works with jar. So the word that is being associated to in association takes jar. So as we said we have the associated then the word it's being associated to that word it's being associated to is known as mudaf ilay and that takes the jar. You know, which is usually represented by a kasra on the end. So, let's take a look here. 
This word here is kel. This this construction here is kel bul walud waladi. All right, waladi. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> waladi. Right. And that means the dog of the boy. Right. So dog is being associated to boy. And since boy is the word that's being associated to, it takes a kasra. Right. And one of the things to keep in mind is that the mudaf is definite because it's being associated and it does not have alif lam nor does it have tanween. So the way that you can recognize a mudaf, mudaf ilahi construction, is that you'll see the first word does not have alif lam nor does it have tanween and then the second word after it is in a state of jar, which is usually represented by this kasra. Not always. Okay, the second case where we see jar is with something known as, um, I guess you could call it jar majroor. It's called a prepositional phrase. It's another type of phrase. And we said that there's five in Arabic that we're going to study. So prepositional phrase. And that's where you have a preposition, which in Arabic is known as a harfu jar. Uh, literally, it's a small word that impacts a noun that comes right after it forcing it to take the state of jar, right? So in a jar majroor, we're going to see a harfu jar, and we're going to learn them below, and right after it's going to come an ism, a noun, and that noun is going to be in a state of jar, right? So if you see any of the following, any of the 16 words here, ba, ta, kaf, lam, waw, mundu, mud, khala, rubba, hasha, min, ada, fi, an, ala, hatta, ila, then the word coming right after it is going to take a kasra, which represents that it's in a state of jar. And that's all. That's it. Okay, guys. Um, Cam fam, that was states. All right. Assalamu alaikum.